this is a story of simple working people, such as there are the world over, in all countries and at all times. Here are their hardships, their humor, and above all, their heroism. The unconquerable heroism of men who take heroism for granted as part of their daily lives. Neither plaster saints nor romantic rebels, they live these lives far from the limelight, without publicity, but often without a spokesman, save when some great crisis or disaster lifts them into the headlines. Yet these men and women are the backbone of nations, the stuff of human destiny. Simple working people, such as there are the world over, in all countries and at all times. Well, Finnick, do the men work tomorrow? Not if it's to be in Scupper Flats, Mr. Barrett. Even against your union? The union isn't being asked to work in Scupper Flats. On the other side of that coal face, there's a million tons of flood water ready to rush right down on top of us. You don't think I'd take a chance of flooding my own mind, do you, Finnick? Well, show us the plans of them old workings, then. He can't show you plans that never existed, Fennig. Ah, uh, there's two opinions about that. The men wouldn't be scared to work it if you hadn't put the wind up them. No, and they wouldn't have to strike if the union would back them up. Davy. Oh, this must be your lad who's off to the university scholarship. Very clever boy, Fennig. I'd like to do something for him. The men aren't going to work scoop of floods. But the union's made the drill test. We wouldn't let you go down there if it wasn't safe. 30 years you've worked in this pit, Bob, and now you take on like this. We all think Bob Fennick's right, see? Where will Fennick? Get it off, get it off, get it off. Hold on, Bob. Now the union is with you. You know what it means to go against the union? Better than being drowned. You know what you can do with the union? Why don't the union make him show us those plans? Ah, show us plans. But it isn't really dangerous, is it, Father? I'll teach them a lesson. their trumpets, the first angel sounds and then follows hail mingled with blood. The second angel sounds and asks where a great mountain burning with fire is cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea becomes blood. Not water, my brethren, but blood. It is not water that has brought us here, but blood. I hear them sound their trumpets. The first angel sounds and then follows hail mingled with blood.
How then, Dickie? I've got nothing for you this morning, Mrs. Fenwick. Oh, you thought I'd have a bit left over from the killing, eh? But the lights, maybe. I've not for you, Martha Fenwick, nor any for that good-for-nothing family of yours. New woman's ever had better sons than mine. No, no better man, neither. Well, maybe an empty belly will make that man of yours think twice next time he wants to call a strike. You had good reasons? Ah, you're a clever chap, bringing misery and poverty on the old town. Now, you go back and tell him, Martha Fenwick. I'll have no snivelling and begging around my shop. How often must I tell you to keep these doors shut? I've had enough of these catchers mooching around every time I've had a kill. Setting up all night. Stuffing your head with that eye for looting rubbish. You and your scholarships. That'll do, Red. If you don't know enough now to pass that scholarship, the next 12 hours won't make no difference. Why don't you go for a bit of a walk up the field, hmm? You ready? I want it, Mother. Breakfast. Breakfast? Did you say breakfast? Oh, that's what I call a feed. Oysters. Pickled. Pity I'm not hungry. It's all the same to you, Mother. I'll just have a piece of that bread. I don't like that kind of fun, Hewitt. I shouldn't make a mock of good food. They're lucky to get anything, a father clever like he is. Isn't every man with a pure miners about a drop of water? Get them to strike against their own unions. Thank you, Martha. My father wasn't so clever, nor my grandfather, neither. They was just men. And Master Pitt commanded, men obeyed. They was daft enough to think of their own wives and children. Your father's a sight cleverer than that, Huey. He can see to a solid seam of coal and all the flood water to the side of it, what Mr. Barris and Union can't find out for all their instruments. Barris knows it's there, all right. The plans of them flooded workings. Taking a chance on it, that's all. Plans? Father wouldn't say he'd seen them if he hadn't. Oh, well, he's seen them all right at the bottom of a pint of beer. Ah, uh, plans or no plans. For eight weeks, I've been sitting about here useless-like, and I'm fed up. Aye, that's the way I like to hear a man talk. There's too many lads nowadays breaking their necks to get away from Pitt. It's a blessing I've at least one son doesn't want to work all his life with his coat on. She's right there. It isn't a coat I want to work in. Well, oh, there wouldn't see much difference between a coat and a football jersey, Huey. Well, all right. Thank God the United is paying Tommy Shields five foot a week. If they can get away from the Pitt, I can. And they don't have to read no books to do it. Well then, Davy. Hi, and Joe. You're going to Tynecastle tomorrow for your examination. Aye. By gum, you're lucky. And one of these days you're going to see me in Tynecastle too. You can bet your life on that. What would you be doing in Tynecastle, Joe? Well, I won't be listening to a lot of college professors anyway. There's money in Tynecastle, Davy. Money. Money? Huh. Tynecastle's up the spot for that. Morning, Davy. Morning, Hello, Joe. Hello, Dad. London's the spot. London. I just hear tell of Lord E. Cullen. He's making three quid a week up there just singing in the street. That's what I'm after. Three quid a week just for singing. Three quid a week. What I'm after is big money. Uh, it'll be big money you'll be needing and all before you can pay me back all the money you pinch out of my pocket every time I get boozed up. You don't appreciate your son, Slugger. He's a born capitalist. You bet your life I am. You've got to have money if you want to have sport, haven't you? Ever going to make money in the pit? Not on your life. Well, I want to have a bit of sport and I want big money, see? And I'm going places. You're going to college, are you? Well, I'm going to look after myself, see? Ah, you can smile all right, Davy, but where's your high mindedness going to get you? Wasting your time fighting for the miners. By gum, what an ambition! Right there. I'd sooner stay in Scuppa Flats, I tell you. You've only got to look at this weapon of mine, running to skin and bone. Me too, I said so at the time. You said so. It was you two that gave Bobby the first cheer. He said so. Kin is to the luck to save your skin. You're kidding us about them plans, that's all. I kidded nobody about nothing. There's plans of them old workings. I saw them in Barris's office that day I did check weighing for Ted Gripple. 
Well, nobody's going to get me on that coking call. I'm not going to drown myself to keep Barris fat. <laughs> get out of here. I'll have nothing more to do with you. I'll pay you out for this homage. You see if I don't. You walk out of work and then you come catching the decent folk for charity. It won't be charity you'll get if my missus pegs out. I'll slit your throat and that's the fact. Off with you or I'll put the police onto you. You talk to the police as if you owned them. You and you lot. What's the trouble, Will? It's my missus. She's got pneumonia. And doctor says she's got to have a cup of beef tea. Uh, and why shouldn't she? That's right. That ramages have got tons of beef. Oh. Here, lads, listen to this. Just a bit of beef, I says. Just a bit of bone. And I'll pay you the minute the strike's over. As God's me maker, I will. And what did he say? He just ups and chases me out to chop with that cleaver of his. There's not a woman in the place who's not insulted. Really? He's got a good stock of booze, too. Come on, Dad, at him. We'll tell him what we think of him. We'll get that beef for Will's wife, all right. They got him, man, or there won't be a thing left. Where do you keep that boot? Ah, uh, you got him. He started it. And that woman of his was up here only this morning, making a nuisance of herself. I saw him making them on. I never did nothing. No, and I don't expect he did anything either. What are you doing with my mate? You leave him alone. You'd better come along and make a charge. Come on. You saw the old thing, didn't you? I did it all, Mr. Rabbit. And you'd better come along, too. Reckon like that on an empty stomach? Don't oh, put down the mind, Daddy. Let the mind come up to you. I looked and behold Good a pair of holes. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Now then, what? Again, Joe, and I beheld and lo, a black horse. Got a horse for the derby? He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was... Contract for coking coal, and he won't need you to work scupper flats. Well, what did I tell me for? We're the ones who's got to work that coking coal, not you. You were going to that pot calling to yours. All right, get back where you belong. Ah, right, get more with your education. All right, and what am I going to do in that college? Educate myself to fight, to fight for my own kind. See, I've worked down there with the rest of you, haven't I? I've got coal dust pitted in my skin the same as the rest of you, haven't I? 
Look, here's something that won't wash out, isn't it, as long as I live. I've seen what the pit's done to some of the men here with your coughs and silicosis and nystagmus of the eyes. I've seen what it's done to my own father, haven't I? Uh, Mr. Ballard! Ah, oh, Briggs. We've got a deputation, Mr. Barris. All right. I shall be a minute, Arthur. All right, Father. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Barris. Good afternoon, Mr. Barris. How are you, Harry? Afternoon, Mr. Barris. Ah, young Kenneth. So you've got the scholarship, eh? Aye. And when do you leave for the university? Today. I'm waiting for my father to get back. You must let me know when you finish at college, won't you? I might be able to get you into one of the council schools. I'm on the board, you know. It's not school teaching I'm up to, Mr. Barris. Oh, well, I'd like to see you get on anyway. You ready, Grace? Yes, Mr. Barrett. Well, I don't think we shall have any trouble now. Hey, you. Shirts I'm putting in for you. See, they send the washing to good woman. None of their newfangled laundries. Has they got other handkerchiefs? Fine, Mother. Are you making sure he's all fussed up and all? Aye, and I'm making sure his pit clothes are kept washed up. Maybe he'll be satisfied with them someday. Same as they sell, Huey lad. Hello, Dad. Did you have a good time? Good as a holiday it was. Good food and all. The only pity was the weren't licensed. Anyone seen out of where with Joe? Oh, Slogger, there's been no sign of him since the day you went in. So you're off to Tyne, Castle Davy. Best of luck, lad. I've got great faith in you. Thanks, Slogger. So long, Martha. None of my family never needed no college education. They was good mining stock. <coughs> Same as I thought your father were. Well, he set himself up against Master Pitt. You know as well as me, Martha, they jailed me for a note. They got their knife into me over the strike, that's all. And well, that don't surprise me. And I noticed all witnesses has come forward to stand up for it. Well, it done one good thing. Left them free to settle strike. So they hurried to get the strike over before I was out, eh? <coughs> ah. How's your cough been, Father? This cough will never kill me, Davy. Father, I don't like the idea of your going down Scopa Flats. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, lad. All you've got to think about is making your way. Someday you're going to do something about this industry of ours. The men have great hopes on you, lad. Uh, they don't talk as if they had. Ah, uh, they think it all the same. What time are you leaving, lad? Well, now you're back, I can go by next train. Well, come along with you. We'll have a bit talking. Huh? Oh, thank you, Martha. Well, we'll be getting along, David, shall we? Aye. So long, Huey. Good luck, Davy. You'll be finding me in Tank Castle and all before three years is up. So long. Well, uh, I'm off, Mother. Aye. Don't forget to keep my bed clothes waiting for me. I don't expect they'll be needing them. want a bite to eat at the train. Oh, thank you, Mother. Goodbye, Mother. and wants ten pounds each way about rock boy. Limit's five. What do you think? Take it. Really, it's money for jam. Okay. Is that you, Lorda? Well, uh, is he able to come tonight all right? And uh, did you put it in the way I asked you, sir? I think it's going to be all right, Joe. That's fine. Well, uh, 
Uh, the place is the Percy Grill. Have you got that? The Percy Grill. And I'll come over to your table, see as if butter wouldn't melt in my mouth. <laughs> well, I've got to rush away now, Laura. I've got to put something off, see? Of course, if you've got to do something more important. Now, don't be daft, Laura. You know me. I mean, all the time I've been in Tynecastle, I've hardly ever set eyes on another girl. That's it, the, the cooking doings, the, the grill of the Percy Grill. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Sounds like poetry, doesn't it? Hello, Joe. Looking for Jenny. Hello, Phil. Yes, I just wanted to see her for a minute, you see. Yeah, listen, when are you two going to get married? Oh, one of these days, you know, when business books up a bit. As a matter of fact, I got a bit of business tonight, and I wonder if you might give another message, would you? Okay, the show will be over soon. I'll tell her. Okay, Bill. Joe! What's the business tonight? Well, Jenny, I was just looking for you. So I noticed. Some other girl tonight. Now, don't be daft, Jenny. You know me. I mean, all the time I've been in time, Castle, I've hardly ever set eyes on another girl. Well, you can't tell me it's business night oh, after no, tonight. Oh, no, chuck it, Jenny. You get enough of that from your mother. I mean, I can't help it if I got a bit of business at night, can I? I'd sooner be with you. You know that. Would you, Joe? Oh, Honest? Of course I would. I mean, you know me. Well, then, Joe, let's go out tonight. Well, let's have a bit of a fling like we used to. I know we'll go to the Percy Grill. Percy Grill? Yes. Where we went when we first met, oh, remember? Alas, I wish I hadn't got this bit of business oh, Joe, tonight. Oh, Joe, let's start afresh. In the same place where we started in the beginning. Joe, I'm talking to you. You might listen to me. All right, Jenny. I'll put it off, you see. And you get out of that fancy dress and I'll wait out All here. Right, see? Bye. Davy, Joe. Sure. Uh, it's me, all right. There's only one Joe Garland in Tynecastle. There's only one Joe Garland anyway. Got that scholarship all right, Davy, did you? Aye. Everyone in Seascale's been wondering what's happened to you, Joe. Well, as a matter of fact, Davy, you see, after that scandal in Ramage's shop and my old dad getting pinched, well, I just couldn't bear the disgrace and I just had to come away, see? Oh, I forgot, Davy. I shouldn't have said that. Your old dad was mixed up in that, wasn't he? That's all right, Joe. What have you been doing with yourself all this time? Oh, I'm a turf accountant. Oh, bookie. Well, I've got better fish than that to fry, you know. Look here, Davy, you're not in a rush, are you? I'd like you to have some food with me and little lady I'm waiting for. No, I'm not in a rush, Joe. Oh, that's fine. She's my landlady's daughter, as a matter of fact. Here she comes. Dave, this is Miss Sunley. Uh, Jenny, this is uh, Dave Fennick, a friend of mine from the university. Oh, pleased to meet you. Now, what about a bit of snuff, eh? What do you say, Dave? Hi, we'll pop into Lockhart, shall we? Lockhart's, what's the matter with you? This is on Joe Garland, so you shut your gob. Now, what about the... Uh, Joe. The uh, Percy Grill, eh? Oh! Come on, Davy. I think I'll have some oysters. You don't mind if I just leave you for a minute, do you? You see, it's uh, one of my clients. It's uh, one of the biggest foundry owners in Tynecastle. That's all right, Joe. Business is business. Back in the jiffy. Joe's a card, isn't he? Yes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Millington. Oh, hello, Garland. <laughs> Got something good? Well, I did hear a whisper about Rock Boy for the 3.30 tomorrow, Mr. Millington. Rock Boy, eh? <laughs> well, I'll have the same. Yes, oh, Laura, I believe you've met Joe Garland. Well, uh, I did meet Mrs. Millington at the Spring Handicap, but uh, I don't suppose she'll remember. <laughs> of course, Mr. Garland. Won't you sit down? Well, I... Uh, Come on, sit down. Have a drink. Oh, thank you, Mr. Millington. Smart lad, that, wasting his time in that bookmaking <laughs> business. What was that horse you said, Garland? Uh, Rock Boy, Mr. Millington. Rock Boy, huh? Pretty girl, Mr. Garland. Your fiancé? No, you got the wrong end of the stick, look, Mrs. Millington. She's with a friend of mine from the university, her boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. oh, Stanley, weren't you saying something about Mr. Garland the other day? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, dear, I thought you did. Uh, something about uh, the Carnport Works. Oh, yes, yes, someone was telling me. I forget who. You know, I believe you know something about coal, Garland. Well, nothing at all, Mr. Millington, except I was born and bred on it. <laughs> well, I may need a buyer for my Carnport works. Well, I wouldn't say no, Mr. Millington. Well, it may be possible, but uh, don't count on it, Garland. Well, all I need is a start, you see, Mr. Millington. Yes, I know, I, I know, I know. You're a smart lad. Huh? Well, you see... Uh... Well, there's only one thing I've got my heart set on. It's rather difficult to explain. I suppose you'd call it coal. Coal? Well, coal mines. I'm trying to arrange a debate at the university at the moment on the private ownership of coal mines. Oh, of course, a very good thing. No, I want to run it down this Sunday. I'm going to speak against it. Oh, yes, naturally, David. Yeah, I think it would be a very good thing. But I must say, it's been ever so nice meeting you, David. And to think you're going to have letters after your name and all. Well, that's jumping ahead a bit, Miss Sunday. Oh, but you're the cleverest person I've ever met, really. Oh, uh, you'll bet your life he is, Jenny, and he's the cleverest you'll ever meet, too. What is this, <laughs> a mutual admiration society? <laughs> oh, but I admire you, David, terribly. Well, you two seem to be getting on all right. I put your nose out of joint this time, Well, Joe. I can't compete to universities, can I? <laughs> That's right. 
But you see, David, it's not often I meet anybody as important as you. I wish the scholarship people thought that. They might raise my allowance a bob or two. <laughs> <laughs> it's time we were getting along, Joe. Anything you say. Do you go anywhere near Westgate Road, David? Yes, I pass it. Well, that's fine. We all go the same way home. We'll meet in the vestibule, then. Excuse me. She's a nice lass, that, David. Ah, she is that. I didn't know you had such good taste, Joe. Taste me? No, you've got the wrong end of the stick, Davy West. Look, no, there's nothing between Jenny and me. Keep the change, will you? Thank you, sir. She's just nice to me because I stay at their place, that's all. Between you and me and the gatepost, Davy, didn't you happen to notice the way you swept her off her feet? Oh, don't be so daft. I sure. tell you, you did, man, and I tell you, it's a case of just going in and winning. <laughs> Joe does the whole thing in style, doesn't he? Taxis and all. Is that you, Joe? Is Jimmy all right? Of course I'm all right, Mother. I thought you must have had an accident coming home in a taxi. Oh. Mother, this is Mr. Fenwick from the university. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Sunley. Goodness gracious me. And me in this state. It's too bad of you, Jimmy. It's all right, Mrs. Sunley. He's as good as one of the family already, aren't you, Davy? Well, I think I'll be going to bed. You'll look us up sometime, Davy, won't you? Of well, course I will, Joe. Good night, Davy. Good night, Joe. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Mrs. Sunley. Good night, Joe. Maybe we could meet again sometime, David. Well, of course. Maybe we could have tea together sometime. Well, that'd be fine, Jen. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got a bit of an headache. I think I'll mix myself a daisy powder. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Unley. Well, what about tomorrow, Jenny? I'll be free after five. Tomorrow? Well, let me see. Well, I can call for you here shortly after five. Oh, all right, then. Good night. Good night, Jenny. Good night. Good night. Jenny, here a minute. You're not treating Joe right. He went off to bed very upset. And if you didn't notice it, you're blinder than I take you for. Was he jealous? He was and all. It doesn't do a girl no good to treat a man like that. I tell you, there was tears in his eyes. I know what I'm doing. It's time I taught him a lesson. Don't you be so sure of yourself, Miss Sunley. I once thought I could teach someone a lesson, and it ended with me marrying your father. I could marry Joe Garland tomorrow just by raising my little finger. But I'm not going to raise it. Not just yet. <laughs> now, the case for the private ownership of anything varies according to what that thing is. And the case for the public ownership varies according to who puts it. <laughs> All right, then I'll put it this way. If private ownership of coal mines, why not private ownership of lighthouses? Because there's no way of making any profit out of a lighthouse. Oh, please, let it take. Now, before I close, I want to remind you first that I do not necessarily believe that everything under the sun should be publicly owned. I might, of course, say that coal mining is not something under the sun. Here, yeah, yeah. here. But that's not quite the point I wish to make, Mr. Nugent. There is a more fundamental difference between coal mining and most other industries. It is briefly that coal, like iron and other natural resources, was not invented by man. It is in no way manufactured by man or even cultivated by him. It is merely put there by nature for man to take. These natural resources, ladies and gentlemen, these national resources are not merely the basis of a few industries. They are not merely incidental to our nation's structure. They are the basis of all our industries. They are the lifeblood of every industry. They are the very foundation upon which our nation is built. The material with which our nation is built. The sustenance without which our nation could not continue to flourish. I resent that this great buried treasure, this source of all our nation's wealth, this utterly vital national heritage should be dispensed to this man or that, good man or bad, 
to exploit this mine or that, this seam or that, willy-nilly, as and when he chooses, to use it as a pawn in price manipulations, cost evasions, middleman transactions, and as a pabulum of his self-aggrandizement. I resent it as I would resent a foreign flag on the cliffs of Dover. Favourite one, the 2.30 job? I should worry, Nobby. The business is as good as yours now, debts and all. <laughs> so you finally got that job, then? You bet your life I did. And you know where to find me to settle everything up, don't you? But if Jenny comes nosing around, you don't know where I am, see? Because i got to get packed and away before she comes home, see? Well, so long. Hope you make your fortune, lad. <laughs> so long, Joe. Jenny! Oh, there you are, David. I thought you were ever so nice. Did you really, Jenny? Look, would you I like to... I wonder what happened to Joe. He said he'd be here for sure. Well, I said for sure he'd be at Jesmond Dean yesterday, under the picnic last Sunday. Or maybe he thinks we like being alone together. Oh, that would be it, wouldn't well, it? Well done, young Frederick. Oh, thanks, Mr. Newton. I suppose you haven't any ambition for politics, have you? Well, as a matter of fact, the subjects I'm studying most... Sorry. Subjects I'm studying most are political science and economy, and, of course, every now and then for a change, I read your speeches in Parliament. <laughs> That's what he's cut out for, talking, John. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Sunley, Mr. Newton. Oh, how do, how do you do? Well, you come and see me when you've got your degree. I might be able to push on a bit. Oh, would you, Mr. Newton? Well, I might only get your degree first. Yes, I will. Fancy, a member of Parliament. Ah, it's one of the best we've got. Did you hear what he said about pushing me on? Oh, I could see he was ever so taken with you. Well, I must be off now. Goodbye. Well, if you wait a bit, Jenny, I'll see you home. Oh, I can't. I'm ever so late already. Ta! Bye. I didn't know you were in, Joe. Hello, Mrs. Sunley. What's the meaning of this, Joe? I knew it. I told her you'd never stand it. I told her she was treating you shocking. Worse than shocking, Mrs. Sunley. I... I just got one of them anonymous letters about it. Fair broke my heart, it did. It's a disgrace. A real disgrace. No, it's better you shouldn't see it, Mrs. Sunley. I mean, there she is out again with him today. Oh, Joe, won't you have a talk with her? No, I won't. I've suffered enough. It's bad enough, Jenny, behaving as she's done, but when it's my best friend, I mean, it's more than flesh and blood can stand. I must say, I'd never have thought it of a fellow like Davy Fenwick. I only hope, Mrs. Sunley, that for Jenny's sake, that he's, his intentions is honourable. By gum, I'll tell her a thing or no, two. No, I'd sooner you didn't, Mrs. Sunley. I'd sooner you didn't say anything to her at all. I'd better know ill will. I just wanted to be happy, that's all. I tell you, she's a bad, heartless girl. For two years now, you've been taking her out as good as you're intended. And now this hoity-toity college professor comes along and you're not grand enough for her. I can't bear no more, Mrs. Sunday. I, I just want to be by myself, that's all. I know how you feel, Joe. Maybe you're looking at the kitchen on your way out. I'll have a nice cup of tea for you. It's real kind of you, Mrs. Sunday. young lady. Joe Gowlin is packing his bag. Packing? Didn't I tell you no man would put up with the way you were going on? Well, you've lost him now, haven't you? You weren't so clever after all, were you? You see where it's got you, don't you? You've lost the best man that ever drew breath. Can you? Don't. You've lost him and you deserve it. You'll never get another like him if you ever get another at all. Oh, Mother, and I wouldn't surprise you. me if you didn't. You don't grow younger, you know. You can't carry on as though there were a thousand young men all lying in wait for you because there isn't. You went your raising your little finger. Well, you left it a bit late to raise your little finger this time, didn't you? And to my way of thinking, that's what you'll do for the rest of your life. Just be a little too late. You don't find good fellas like Joe Gowlin every day in the oh. week. And mark my words, you keep on making a fool of yourself, you'll finish up like your Aunt Lily, an old maid.
Jenny. What's wrong, Jenny? Don't let's talk about it, David. Oh, let's talk about it. Oh, come on in. Sit down here. Let me take your mic off. What is it, Jenny? It's Mother. She's been on at me. She's been on at me all the time. It's not my fault Joe Garland left, is it? Joe Garland left? I couldn't stand him, David. I couldn't stand him. I don't quite follow, Jenny. I didn't know he was mad about me. Joe Garland mad about you? Why, told but me himself. But that's what she says, David. That's what she says. But I never gave him no encouragement, did I? Well, of course you didn't, Jenny, no. But you see, he left because... Because he found out that I liked you more than him. I can't help it if I love you. She can't blame me, can she? You love me? I can't help it, can I? Jenny. And you love me, too. Don't you, David? From the very first minute I saw you, Jenny. Oh, David, I want us to be together always. I can't go back there. I can't stand it. I want us to be married and happy and, oh, everything. Well, of course, Jenny. I'll take you away from there the minute I can. Oh, David. The minute I get my degree and get a post. But, David, that's another whole year. We couldn't wait as long as that. Couldn't you get a post now? Jenny, it's not very long. But you said you could be a schoolmaster with what you've got now. Schoolmaster? But I don't You said want... you could easily get a post in Sleescale. This man Barris promised you. Jenny, you don't... Oh, David, we could have the loveliest little home. You could study in the evening with all your big, important books and me sitting beside you. But I can't throw away my scholarship and the lectures at the university and everything. And we must be practical, darling. Oh, but, David, I am practical. I've got it all worked out to a T. You can get ever such good furniture today on the Never Never. The Never Never. Oh, about half a crown a week, David, that's all. I'm sure there must be very cheap houses in Sleescale. Cheap? No, that's not the point, Jenny. I'd feel I... I'd feel I was letting everybody down so much. My father, the men. Say no more about it, David. Well, you heard what Mr. Nugent said. He'd drop me like a hot brick if I threw everything away. Not another word. Just tell me you love me. More than anything in the world, Jenny. Now, there's a good way to remember this, lads. Now, watch. <laughs> now, what's that? Pit pony! That's right, Pat, a pit pony. That's the way to remember Scandinavia, a pit pony, kicking his hind legs in the air during a strike. <laughs> Remember Stockholm, that's the capital of Sweden. It's right there on the pony's hoof. And if Oslo, that's the capital of Norway, right there on the pony's Adam's apple. <laughs> well, now it's closing time. Go along home. Good afternoon. Oh, oh Pat. Pat Reedy. Well, so this is your last day, eh, Pat? Hi, Mr. Fenwick. Oh, did you tell your mother what I said? Hi. And she said, I've got all the education I need for Hugh and Cole. Well, I'll come along down with you. Fenwick. Yes, sir? Wait for me a bit, will you, Pat? I understand, Fenwick, that Mr. Barris offered you the opportunity of coaching his son in the evening. And you saw fit to refuse. Well, the evenings are my only chance for studying for my degree, Mr. Strother. Hmm. A pity you didn't think of that before you ran away from college. You'd have had your degree by now. You wish to see me, Mr. Strother? Eh? Yes. Yes, we're getting that laughter in your class again. I must remind you once again, Fenwick, education is a serious matter. A child's whole life may depend on it. But, Mr. Strother, in an article on modern education... I learned all I need to know about modern education before you were born. The basis of it is to have teachers with proper degrees. We may keep you here to oblige Mr. Barris, 
But we cannot keep our eyes closed to your limitations if you refuse to be sensitive of them yourself. I'm sorry, Mr. Swallow. Another thing, Fenwick. Scandinavia is not a horse. Let me refer you to Gray's Geographical Compendium for Pupil Teachers, page 173. You will find these words, Fenwick. The shape of Scandinavia may be likened to that of a bear. A bear, Mr. Fenwick, a bear. But, Mr. Strother, these boys have never even seen a bear. Precisely. We teach them two things at one and the same moment. The shape of Scandinavia and the shape of a bear. You may go, Fenwick. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hear you managed to get track of your jaw. Ah, uh, he's in town, Castle, all right. I ran over and dropped in on him. Thought I might be able to touch him for a quid or two. <laughs> Nearly finished up by him touching me. Hey, Bob, look. Second time he's been down this month. Must be getting fond of us. Mm. A lot of water here. Oh, the men aren't worried about the dampness, Mr. Barris. They worked in worse than that over at Globe Coal. But some of them are beginning to think it's coming from the old workings. Perhaps they worked far enough at the end of the seam. Move them along again next ship. As you wish, Mr. Barris. I'm not nagging at you, Pat, but you've got a good brain. You've got no right to throw it away. You've got no right to go down the pit. You can be more used than that to yourself and everyone else. What's wrong with pit? It's a man's job, isn't it? <laughs> I thought that when I was leaving school. I thought it was grand to have a man's job. Oh, then, Davy. Hello, you Did you see the match line up today? Oh, yeah, I did. You're getting on grand. I have a name mentioned in the Time Castle Chronicle and all. It's bound to be seen, isn't it? Aye, of course it is. Uh, when are you coming up to the house, Huey? Jenny hasn't seen any of you for a couple of months. I'll be dropping in one of these days. Got to put in a lot of training, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Remember me to Jenny. You see what our Huey thinks about pit work, Pat. He's not mad about football just because of the exercise, you know. Well, somebody's got to go down pit or we wouldn't have any calls. Yes, I know that. Oh, Mrs. Reedy, I was hoping to... Don't you, Mrs. Reedy, me. I know the bloody you're trying to stuff into my lad's head. Give in, Pat. And where do you think your education got you? Forty-five bob a week. Let me tell you this, Mr. Smarty. When our Pat's your age, you'll be fetching every bit as much as that. And now I'm mucking about for a couple of years before he does it. Ha! Such a lot you are going to do for the men. Going into Parliament and all. <laughs> Ah, oh, then, Mother. How's the cell, lad? Father in? You'll be back in a minute. Come on in, I'll give you a bit of bacon. You can wait for him. I'd better be getting along, Mother. Jenny's got a bit of veal and ham pie waiting for me. Please, the cell, lad. Mother, I, I wish you'd give Jenny a chance. I haven't been to see her all the time we've been here. Does she want me to go and see her? Don't give her a chance, Mother. She's a stranger here. Yeah? She's lonely. She wants cheering up. Wants cheering up, do she? Lonely? Why should a woman be lonely with a man her own to look after? Maybe I should be lonely and all if I thought of nothing but getting a boat. Mm -hmm. All right, Mother. Davy, come along in, lad. Well, Jenny's expecting me, Father. I think I'd better... Oh, all right. How's she getting along, eh? Well, not so bad, Father. I'd never talk to you sometime, Father. Hmm. How's things down at Scopper Flats, eh? Oh, Barris is nigh on finished that contract for coking coal. If Scopper Flats has lasted three years, it should last another three weeks, eh? Aye, I heard you'd soon be getting out of it. Well, I must be off. So long. So long, Mother. So long, Davy. Hello, Jenny. 
What's wrong today, Jenny? Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong at all. I wish you wouldn't eat with your fingers. I have such a wonderful life, I'm sure. With no maid, and all the lovely housework to do. Not even a wireless set to annoy me in the evenings. And I suppose if I was to ask you to take me to Tyne Castle tonight, you'd think I was insulting you. Oh, no. Nothing's wrong. Oh, I've been going out too many evenings lately, Jenny. Even if we could afford it. You might say excuse me when you leave the table. Afford it? It's a pity you didn't think of that when you turned down Barris's offer to give his son a little tuition. You can never afford anything. I can't even call my furniture my own with the Never Never Man pestering my life out. And I even had to pay for the honeymoon. It'd make me so terribly, terribly happy if you'd take me out just this once. Oh, don't be sensible, Jenny. I want to finish this book tonight. You want? Of course, it doesn't matter what I want. It never seems to strike you that you brought me to a place where there's not a soul I can talk to. Why don't you try and be friendly with my people, Jenny? I'm... Your people? Your people, indeed. You didn't tell me your father was a jailbird, did you? Jenny. You needn't try and deny it. I know all about it. Robbed his shop, he did. Nice kind of father-in-law for a... Jenny. Ah! David, it was wicked of me, wicked. I should have done that, Jenny. Oh, but I deserved it. Every bit of it. I'm a bad, heartless girl. I'm, I'm just a drag on you. I'm... A... Your nerves are on edge a bit, darling. That's all. Yes, that's it. My nerves. I need cheering up, David. Yes, of course. Jenny. If only for your sake. I know we'll go to the Percy Grill. Where we first met, remember? We forget all our silly little squabbles and start afresh in the place where we started in the beginning. Yes. Well, maybe you're right, Jenny. Run along, get ready. Oh, David, you're so sweet to me. We can just catch the 520, darling. I'll be down in a minute. David, that's the laundry. You see them, will you? They're trying to charge me nine bucks too much. Tell them I'll attend to them tomorrow. Now then, son. Mother. Well, come in, come in. She's brought Jenny a drop of that old maid broth of hers. Oh, that's fine, Mother. Come on in. No, that's the kitchen, Mother. Here's the drawing room. Oh, drawing room? Hey, it's oh. grand, isn't it, Martha? Oh. Maybe Jenny's tidying up the kitchen or something. Uh, Jenny thought you were the laundry. They're trying to swindle her out of ninepence or something, but Jenny's not having any. Laundry? <laughs> that's a thing never gets the chance of swindling me. Well, sit down, Mother. Here's a fine chair. You can sink into it like... Tea in the parlor, eh? Oh, once in a while. Murchison shop cake? Oh. <laughs> I get you a drop of port, Mother. To cheer you up. We don't want to interfere with your studying, lad. Oh, you can chuck it for this one night, Father. It isn't so often we get a chance for a talk, is it? No. Oh, here she is. Well, how's that for a quick ch Visitors for you, Jenny. Oh. Uh, How are you, lass? This is a great pleasure, and such strangers, too. What a shame you've just caught David and me going out. But, Jenny, it's mother and father... You see, we promised some friends to meet them in time, Castle, and we really couldn't disappoint them, could we, David? Oh, pretty. Now, <laughs> ah, Jenny, look here. We don't have to go in. No, time. lad, Jenny's right, and we couldn't have stopped more than a minute or two anyway. Of course, and you can easily come in again sometime, can't you? That's right, lass. Well, you can still have a drop of port, Mother. I don't know what gave you the notion that I'd take the drink. The lad's just trying to be pleasant, Mother, that's all. David, hurry up. We'll be late for the train. What you doing, David? Coming. Come and see us again soon, will you, Mother? Yeah, best send your postcard first. Oh, good night, Mrs. Fenwick. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mother. Good night, Father. Good night, Davy. Blessing of at least one son who's not breaking his neck to get away from Pitt. Give me that. 
that. Oh, thanks, Teddy. The rubber you and got it in him, Bob. Uh, Fine game. He played three goals and all. Uh, and lovely lovely answer answer that one day. Lovely answer it were and all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's living in it. Uh, how do you think they did? Well, you come up and have a bit of snap with this, won't you, Davy? Oh, I'll drop in a bit later, Father. I've got a bit of business to see to now. Well, what likes the matter, Dad? Nothing, Father. Nothing. Hey, your lad's doing well, Slogger. Have you heard from him? Well, well, Joe, if I were to send him a telegram saying I was starved to death, he'd send me a rape. found him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. Oh, should you come about bottomless pits? We're through with scupper flats. Let's have something cheery. For him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth. Come in. Yes. Shh. Yes, I'm expecting him over. Yes, Finney, what is it? Well, I was wondering if you still wanted a tutor for your son, Mr. Barris. Oh, you've changed your mind, have you? Well, I needed the time for studying, but now that I'm leaving the school... Oh? Yes, Mr. Strother's just given me notice. Yes, I heard you weren't giving satisfaction. It's a great disappointment to me, Fenwick. After all the trouble I'd taken to get you in there. I believed I was producing results. Yes, well, if the school doesn't consider you efficient, I'm afraid... Still, I'm a fair man. I'll give you another chance. Thank you, Mr. Barrison. Of course, you can't expect quite the same terms. And let me see, what was it I offered? Half a crown a lesson, three lessons a week. I'll tell you what I'll do, Fenwick. I'll give you ten shillings a week for five lessons. You can start tonight. Go along now and arrange it, my son. Good afternoon. Why, my dear fellow, I didn't know you were waiting. It's all right, Mr. Barris. How do you do, Mr. Garland? Fine. I'm meeting Millington's now, aren't you? Uh, and a partnership in the offing, too. There's one thing I'd like is to see a man get on, especially <laughs> one of my own men. And you used to be that, didn't you? Proud of it, Mr. Barris, proud of it. Well, if it isn't Davy Fenwick, how are you, Davy lad? Fine, Joe. I'm getting on, Davy. Fine, I've just pulled off a big deal. That's right, Davy. Is there anything I like is to see a man getting on? <laughs> Remember me to uh, Jenny, will you? <laughs> It's been kept quiet about this contract coming through me, Mr. Barris, isn't it? You don't want the men to know, eh? Well, maybe they wouldn't understand, you see, all this fat-headed notion they've got about scupper flats. I mean, if I know where to lay my hands on the best cook in call, it's a duty I owe to my firm, isn't it? There's no reason why anyone should know. Oh, I see. <laughs> you wondered about young Fenwick noticing something. You know him very well, of course. Well, I did not, didn't you know, Mr. Barris? Rather a headstrong young man, I'm afraid. Mm. Just lost his job, schoolmastering. Got the sack, eh? Pity in a way, mm. he had brains. I always did say it was a shame the way he threw himself away. Over a bit of a lass. I think I'll drop in on him and cheer him up, poor fellow, losing his job and all. Jay. I'd like to know how you expect us to live on ten shillings a week. Well, I don't, Jenny. I'll get another post somewhere. I'll advertise in the Tynecastle papers. In the meantime, we can sell this house and go and stay with my mother. Your mother? I'd rather starve in the gutter and that's final. I've got ambitions. I was meant to be a lady, I was. Not just a skivvy for somebody who's a rotten failure. Architect. He's here again, the Never Never Man. I'm going to tell him the truth. He can take his rotten furniture away for all the chance we've ever got a paying for it. Don't be an idiot, Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Remember me? Joe. Oh, hello, Joe. I hope you don't think I was trying to cut Jenny's throat. Why, oh, Dave, because it about never entered my head. <laughs> what a silly thing to say, David. Come in, Joe, come in. Oh, thanks. It's wonderful to see you again, isn't it, David? <laughs> yes, come on in, Joe. Ah, just thought I'd have a minute, you know. Been in to see your father, I suppose, Joe. Ah, that big boozer. <laughs> oh, he's not a bad sort. Yeah, sit down and have some tea. Well, I only got a minute or two to spare, you see, David. I got this business with Barris. We're selling him some of them new pumps. About time they cleared the water out of them pits. Well, Scopa Flats is closed down. That's one good thing. Oh, I don't suppose there was much to worry about there, you know. You didn't no. always think so. Oh, well, Jenny. How's married life treating you, eh? Oh, that was so nice, isn't it, David? Now you're getting on the way of business, Davy. Oh, he's doing ever so well. They think a terrible lot of him up at the school, don't they, David? Mr. Barris thinks the world of him and all. He's been given the job of teaching his son in the evenings above everybody else's head. Haven't you, David? Oh, well done, Davy. Not doing so bad yourself, eh, Joe? Well, Davy, you know, I don't hope we're grumbling, but it does get a fellow down in the end. I mean, Paris this week, Brussels the next, London every other day. See who it is, David. Tell them I'm not in. Probably my creditors have spotted your car, Joe. <laughs> David's going out tonight, Joe. 
Oh, well, I've got a bit of business tonight myself, as a matter of fact. I hardly got a second to call my own, you know, Jenny. <laughs> Visitor for you, Joe. Well, hello, Dad. Well, by gum, it is grand to see you again. You said a wireless message you was here, Joe. <laughs> Thanks very much for all them five quid you never sent me. What brings you to Sleescale? Time castle too hot for you? <laughs> you can't stop him having his little joke, can you, Davy? No. <laughs> I was just coming along to see you, Dad. I'd have broken your blasted neck if you hadn't. <laughs> Where are you, Henny? You're doing very well for yourself, aren't you? Well, a lot of expenses, you know, Dad. <laughs> uh, well, you're going to have a few more. All the lads is waiting down at the salutation. We're celebrating the closing of the scope of flats, and I don't see no reason why you shouldn't put your hand in your pocket oh, for no. it. Only Come got on. Five minutes, you know, Dad. I can drink plenty in five minutes. Are you coming along, David, lad? Right, I can't stop it. Good night, Mrs. Fanny. Good night, Jenny. See you soon, David. I'm looking forward to a ride in that posh car of you. Joe always makes me laugh. He's a success, that's what he is. And to think I could have had him just by raising my little finger. Well, why didn't you? Why didn't I? Because I was a fool, that's why. A fool! A fool! This, therefore, is the relative change between the second variable and that of the first. Now, obviously, if A does not differ from X, this ratio has no meaning. I'm glad to hear it has no meaning. It certainly hasn't any for me. I tell you, I'm no good at mathematics. I don't want to be an engineer anyway. Well, what are we wasting our time for, then? Father wants me to follow him at the pit. I loathe it. All this scupper flats business and everything. Still, the men didn't break through. Their luck held out. Yes. Yes, it did, didn't it? Just held out. What's worrying you, Arthur? But their luck won't hold out forever. Has it anything to do with Mr. Gowlin? Coking coal for Millington's, eh? The Scopper Flats isn't closing down after all. I'm not sure about this money clause. Well, don't you think that's a matter between me and Mr. Millington, Mr. Barris? Of course, of course. How then, Joe? Hello, Davy. Good evening, Mr. Barris. How dare you come in here? What do you want? I'm not standing on ceremony, Mr. Barris. That's another contract for coking coal. I implore you to teach my son arithmetic. Get on with it, I hope you? you've got a strike clause in that contract, Mr. Barris. You'll need it. Now, don't be too hasty, Davy. Now, what do you think I've come over here for? Well, what have you come over here for? Well, I'll tell you, Davy. You see, there was Millington signing this contract for coking coal and me worrying to death about those men going back to Scupper Flats. Well, I had to come over to try and stop it, see, Davy, and what do I find? Mr. Barris convinces me I'm wrong. You little rat. Do you remember telling me over in Tyne Castle that they were certain to break through that coal face one day? How you thanked your lucky stars you were out of that death trap? You remember the strike? Remember how we starved? How you said you weren't going to drown yourself to keep Barris fat? Well, nobody's going to drown themselves to keep you fat. You really think you can induce those men to strike? To start that misery and suffering all over again. There's not going to be any more misery and suffering. I'm going to get the union behind the men this time. I'm going over to Tyne Castle tonight to see Harry Nugent. Get this case put before the union on Wednesday. And if I can't do anything else, I'll raise a stick. What right's he got to poke his nose into other folks' business? I got a couple of thousand quid at stake in this. Besides, think of Mr. Millington's feelings. You don't think Fanny can have any influence with the union, do you? Well, he might. It's no good just sitting down let him do his worst. There's nothing we can do to stop him till tomorrow morning and try and find out what sort of success he's had. Well, tomorrow morning might be too late. How's he going to get back from Tyne Castle tonight? He can't. There isn't a train. Well, let him go and see his Mr. Harry Nugent, MP. Thank you, Mr. Barris. Good night, Mr. Bennett. Good night, Gowlin. See yourself to the door, will you? I'd rather... All right, Mr. Oh, Gowlin. If there was any danger, there'd be plenty of warning, wouldn't there? The pitch, you mean? Yes, of course there would be, Mr. Bennett. Good night, Mr. Bennett. Of course.
But I know I can convince them, Mr. Nugent, if you'll only give me the chance. Yeah, you're a convincing talker, all right. That's what I thought that day at the college. Aye. You said you'd do something for me, you remember? Aye, I remember. Come and see me. I said, when you've got your degree. You know, I had great hopes of you, young Fennec. I had a notion you might be just the right lad to step into my shoes in a year or two. It was a great disappointment to me when you showed you didn't think it was so important, after all. Well, I'm not asking you to do anything for myself, Mr. Nugent. Aye, maybe. You want me? When you're through. Well, I'll do what I can for you, lad. Oh, thanks, Mr. Nugent. <laughs> How are you getting back to Sleeve School tonight? Oh, don't you worry about that, Mr. Nugent. I'll hop onto a lorry or something. Good night. Good night. <laughs> She was never coming back. Did you do? I just had to come round, you see, Davy, to settle a little bit of difference, you see? Forgive and forget, eh, Joe? That's the way, Davy. I mean, you and me's been pals all these years. It didn't seem right let a bit of misunderstanding come between us, did it? There's no misunderstanding as far as I'm concerned, Joe. That's the spirit, Davy. I mean, two sides to every question, eh? You were never coming back. Where have you been all this time? Fine, Gazel. You're so quiet. Come tell me all about it. It wasn't about one of those silly old mining things, was it? Yes, Jenny, it was one of those silly old mining things. You know, David, I wish you wouldn't waste all your lovely brain on these things. You know, I've had a great idea. Have you, Jenny? You see, I've been thinking about you not having a job and everything. And I suddenly thought, what a good thing it would be if you were to go along to Millington's and have a talk with Joe Garland. I'm sure he could get you in there, and you know what a terrible lot he thinks of you, David. Does he, Jenny? You know he does. Now, don't let's have any of this silly jealousy business. You know I'm only thinking of you getting on. So Joe would give me a job, wouldn't he? Yes. But you'd have to give up all this silly idea about miners and everything. You see, David, people haven't any patience with that sort of thing nowadays. Did Joe say that? Yes, of course. You've always loved Joe, haven't you, Jenny? But I can't blame you. Any more than I can blame myself for falling in love with you. Ton after ton, further and further into that barrier. A barrier, gentlemen, which is holding back a million tons of flood water. They've taken drill tests? Drill tests. 
You've all of you been working miners at some time or other. And you all know that without plans, it is impossible to be absolutely certain that your drill tests are not deceiving you. Well, unfortunately, we're not able to inspect the plans of the flooded workings at Sleescale. The owner of the mine insists that they never existed. But my father insists that they did, and still do. And I should like to know why the owner of the mine is so afraid to have them inspected. We can't listen to every Tom, Dick or Harry who happens to say he once saw some plans. The men who worked in Scupper Flats listened to him and starved for three months to avoid working there. But anyhow, if Ballas has got the plans, there's not to fear. He wouldn't run the risk of flooding his own mine. There are mine owners who will take a gamble, just as there are very few miners who don't. We all realize... But here is a gamble I beg you not to be a party to. You may deny that you have any intention of being a party to anything, that you just intend to do nothing. Like a man who sits watching a child drowning in two feet of water. He's not a party to it. And in law, there is no crime he could be accused of, certainly not murder. And in the same way, if these men drown in scupper flats, nobody will be entitled to accuse you of murder. You will say you were not a party to it. And so will you, and you. But what will your conscience say? And yours, and yours. It is in your hands today to decide whether or not these men shall ever again enter that death trap. Your hands and yours, today. And at this very minute, they're stripping that barrier. The barrier that is holding back a million tons of flood water. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wilkins. We've all been impressed. In fact, swept off our feet by the eloquence and sincerity of this young man. Hear, yeah, hear. Yeah. But is he as sincere as we think? Will you please tell me, Mr. Fenwick, exactly when you first decided to come here today? Last Saturday night. Aye. Scooper Flats had been working for three years. And it just happened to be last Saturday night that you first decided to put it before us. It happened to be last Saturday night that I first heard about the new contract. Aye. A contract which you knew was of great value to Mr. Gowland. What are your personal relations with Mr. Gowland, Mr. Fenwick? I used to be pretty friendly. Aye. Up till last Saturday night, I think, Mr. Fenwick. The night you decided to try to put a stop to this contract of Mr. Gowland's. You and Mr. Gowland quarreled. That has nothing whatever to do with my coming here today. It was a very bitter quarrel, Mr. Fenwick. It came to blow. I told you it had no connection whatever with my coming here. I believe it was your wife you quarreled about, Mr. Fenwick. Your wife has left you as a result of it. Hasn't she? What's that got to do with the danger to Scopa Flats? If Scopa Flats is dangerous now, it's been dangerous for the last three years. And yet you didn't decide to do anything about it until last Saturday night. The night that you had this violent domestic quarrel with Mr. Gowland. I put it to you, Mr. Fenwick, that you were determined to do anything you could to revenge yourself upon him, and that's why you're here today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, it's obvious who has put this member up to this and why. Mr. Finnick, please. His intention is to give you a completely false impression. I beg you not to be stampeded into please, it. Please, Mr. Finnick, Mr. Finnick. Go on, lad, you're wasting your breath. Good afternoon, Mr. Finnick. Thank you very much for all the trouble you've taken. I think, gentlemen, we can pass to the next item on the agenda. The question is using paint or wallpaper at the Gatethorpe branch. Mr. Williams, please. How'd you get on, Davy? Oh, no good, Tom. I... Oh. Hey, I told you, you were wasting your time, lad. Hello, Davy. I hear you didn't pull it through. What happened, lad? Well, I did my best, Father, but I'm afraid... Uh... Oh? Well, you can't do better than your best, lad. But I should have thought... So you're going down, eh, Pat? Aye, Mr. Fenwick promised to show me the ropes today. Hey, I'll break in, boy. <laughs> Davy! Davy! Davy, it's happened! The letter came while I was getting ready for the pit. They've asked me, Davy. They've asked you what? To play for Time Castle. They were watching the match when I scored three goals. When I did the hat trick, Davy. And now they've asked me to play a trial with the reserves next Saturday. Grand lad. Slugger, I'm playing for Time Castle. No. I told you they had their eye on me, didn't I? You wouldn't believe me, would you? Hey, it's come up, lads. I'm playing next Saturday. Hey, not so hasty. Wait for the international. Look. 
Come on, come on, gonna be all day. All right, all right. I'm just putting in the artistic touches. You coming to see me play on Saturday, Slugger? Of course I am, lad. Of course. Aye, they're thinking of running excursions so as everybody can come. Is that right, Harry? Uh, you won't find Harry there. He's got that day whippet of his for the county stakes. Aye, he's gonna win and all. Uh, I'll break his blasted neck if he doesn't. I've got two and a ten on him at twenties. Yeah, come on, let's get this propped up. Oh, I don't see no worry. I don't see why we should slave our guts out just for our Joe's benefit. Headstock company. Just try on him, Mr. Barris. We've got all the punch we can get in electrical gear and ring amalgamated. Every rescue man they can find. The steam winding gear. You better get a hold of Scopoline. Scopoline. Hello? We've got as far as Scopper number five. The water's still rising quick. And all the turns are blocked. There's five of us. Have you tried the air tunnels to drill coal? They're full of gas. The water's fetched it up. Oh. Get out, both of you. But the rigging and headstock and amalgamated. I'll attend to that. Get out. Hello. Now listen, Fenwick, carefully. Make for the old workings. Go right along the upper tunnel. The block at the end's only a frame dam. You can soon knock it away. Old workings? Don't be afraid of water. That's all on the lower level. Now don't take the branches nor the left dip. Keep due east for 1,500 yards. So you did have them plans all the time. <laughs>
Batters him in. Batters in order. All right. Come on. Come on, Jim. My son is down there, Barris. My son, Bob Ogle. Why don't you get yourself in by and fetch him out? That will do no good, Tom. These people want to know what's being done to get the men out. Most of the ships have got away in the upper levels of Globe Coal. We're in constant touch with them. Is our Bob? We are part of it. There's a man in the pit top line now getting the names through. Your husband, Mrs. Fenwick, was cut off on the other side. But he managed to find a way into the old work. You were there. There are five others with him. I don't know who they are. Can I join the relief yes, party? Yes, come along. Stay here in the yard, Mother. It'll be all right. Sight for sore eyes. Hey, there's no frame down about this. Above water level anyway, and a relief party will be drilling through before you can say Pat Reedy. So we've not to do but just sit ourselves down and wait. Oh, a bit of a rest won't do us any harm, eh, Pat lad? <laughs> May as well go easy on these pit lamps. Now, we're going to take him in turn, darling. Here, I'll start. Pity we lost, Ali. He was looking forward to his whipped winning on Saturday. Ah, Saturday was going to be Harry's big day and all. I'll be thinking of him while I'm playing in that trial. Oh, my, you should see us coming. Passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. There were lots and lots of lasses there, and all were smiling faces. Gunning along the Scotwood Road to see the blade and races. Oh, my.
Keep on for 300 yards. Take the right dip. Remove that fall. We must expect difficulties. We must blast a new roadway above it. Come on, then. Let's get on with it. Mr. Fennick, I feel real bad. It's Mr. Dummick, I think. I know, lad. Would you believe it? I don't expect there's a lot of nourishment in him, but they're better than out. Here's me with my cuff drops in my pocket, and I forgot all about them. <laughs> First time in my life. There you are, lad. Thank you, Mr. Fennick. What day would you say it was, Father? Eh? Oh, Friday morning, I'd say, lad. It isn't Saturday yet. No, no, not like that, no. <coughs> no, it can't be, can it? You call that pounding? We'll be here till doomsday at this rate. We've got to be out by Saturday. Uh, before closing time and all. By gum what I could do to a pint. I've still got that last cough drop, lad. Would you like it now? Yeah. Come on, lad, book up. We got all the men out of Globe Cold, thank God. Nearly 80 of them. Here, Mrs. Fay. Nasty business, this. Union are feeling pretty sick. They didn't listen to your son that day. Why? There wasn't one of them that wouldn't eat out of his hand now. I can tell you that much. A disaster's a disaster. It's a chance every pitman's got to take. Well, I expect they'll get your men out all right, Mrs. Finney. Maybe. And how about our pet? You're a member of Parliament, aren't you? What are you going to do about our pet? Tell me that. Sarah, they're doing everything they can, lad. Ah, they're doing everything they can, lad. What's the matter, Doctor? Stroke. Been overdoing it. What sort of progress are they making down there? There's still a chance, Mr. Nugent. Ah. service.
the book of John. I am the light of the world. They that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Down in this pit, dear brethren, there is darkness. All around us there is darkness. But the light of the world is here, even here, in the darkness of this pit. What's all this preaching about? This isn't Sunday. It isn't Sunday, is it? It's not Saturday yet. Well, in gold, my brethren, is our lot upon earth. And the fourth angel sounds, and another star falls in the bottomless pit. Ah, oh, for the shock of it wept. I see it, my brethren. I am given the gift of prophecy. I am a prophet in the paradise pit. Sit down, man, sit down. I see them. I. Can't do any more work here without you timbering. Paris knew his way about here, all right. If only... But he's no use to us now. There's nothing we can do but take a chance this way. I've lived a rotten life, rotten, just a bozer, a big bozer. Present the men at the inquiry. I present the men. What men? My father, Huey. Mrs. Winthrop's two sons, Harry Brace, Slogger, Gowland, Wet. Young Pat Reedy. What am I going to say when I represent the men? It was all very sad. No one was to blame. I know what your heart set on, lad, and you'll get your chance to fight for it. The world's like a wheel. Your turn will come. The way you said that, you sounded like my father. Good night, Mr. Newton.
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, out of the darkness of the world that is, into the light of the world that could be and must be, a world purged of its ancient greeds, a world in which dreams are not empty nor sacrifices in vain, a world of infinite promise which the unconquerable spirit of man will someday forge into fulfillment. Thank you.